Hi everyone, welcome to theCUBE's special presentation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got two great guests, one for calling in from Germany, or videoing in from Germany, one from Maryland. We've got VMware and AWS. This is the customer successes with VMware Cloud on AWS Showcase, accelerating business transformation uh, here in the Showcase. We've got Samir Kadu, worldwide VMware Strategic Alliance Solution Architect Leader with AWS. Samir, great to have you. And Daniel you. Reithmeyer, Principal Architect global AWS synergy at VMware. Guys, you guys are working together. You're the key players in this relationship as it rolls out and continues to grow. So welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, greatly appreciate it. Great to have um, you guys both on. As you know, we've been covering this since 2016 when Pat Gelsing, then CEO, and then, then CEO AWS at Andy Jassy did this. It kind of got people by surprise, but it really kind of cleaned out the positioning in the enterprise for the success of VM workloads in the cloud. VMware's had great success with it since, and you guys have a great partnership. So this has been like a really strategic, successful partnership. Where are we right now? You know, years later, we got this whole inflection point coming. You're starting to see, you know, this idea of higher level services, more performance are coming in at the infrastructure side, more automation, more serverless. I mean, it, and A, I mean, it's just getting better and better every year in the cloud, kind of a whole nother level. Where are we, Samir? Let's start with you on, on the relationship. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, there's several things to keep in mind, right? So in 2016, right? That's when the partnership between AWS and VMware was announced. And then less than a year later, that's when we officially launched VMware Cloud on AWS. Years later, we've been driving innovation, working with our customers, jointly engineering this between AWS and VMware, day in, day out, as far as advancing VMware Cloud on AWS. You know, even if you look at the innovation that takes place with the solution, things have modernized, things have changed, there's been advancements. You know, whether it's security focus, whether it's platform focus, whether it's networking focus, there's been modifications along the way, even storage, right, more recently. One of the things to keep in mind is we're looking to deliver value to our customers together. These are our joint customers. So there's hundreds of VMware and AWS engineers working together on this solution. And then factor in even our sales teams, right? We have VMware and AWS sales teams interacting with each other on a constant daily basis. We're working together with our customers at the end of the day too. Then we're looking to even offer and develop jointly engineered solutions specific to VMware Cloud on AWS and even with VMware's other platforms as well. Then the other thing comes down to is where we have dedicated teams around this at both AWS and VMware. So even from solutions architects, even to our sales specialists, even to our account teams, even to specific engineering teams within the organizations, they all come together to drive this innovation forward with VMware Cloud on AWS and the jointly engineered solution partnership as well. And then I think one of the key things to keep in mind comes down to, we have nearly 600 channel partners that have achieved VMware Cloud on AWS service competency. So think about it from the standpoint, there's 300 certified or validated technology solutions they are now available to our customers. So that's even innovation right off the top as well. Great stuff, Daniel. I want to get to you in a second upon this principal architect position you have. In your title, you're the global it was synergy person. Synergy means bringing things together, making it work. Take us through the architecture because we heard um, a lot of folks at VMware Explore this year, formerly VMworld, talking about how the, the workloads on IT has been completely transforming into cloud and hybrid, right? This is where the action is. Where are you, is your customers uh, taking advantage of that new shift? You got AI ops, you got IT ops changing a lot. You got a lot more automation, edges right around the corner. This is like a complete transformation from where we were just five years ago. What's your thoughts on the relationship? So um, at, at first I would like to emphasize that our collaboration is not just uh, that we have dedicated teams to help our customers get the most and the best benefits out of VMware Cloud and AWS. We are also enabling us mutually. So AWS learns from us about the VMware technology where VMware people learn about the AWS technology. Uh, we are also enabling our channel partners and we are working together on customer projects. So we have regular assembles globally and also virtually on Slack and uh, the usual suspect tools uh, working together and uh, listening to customers. That's, that's very important. 
um, asking our customers where are their needs and we are driving the solution into the direction that our customers uh, get the, the best benefits out of VMware Cloud on AWS. And over the time, we really have involved the solution. As Samir mentioned, we just added additional storage solutions uh, mm -hmm. to VMware Cloud on AWS. We now have three different instance types that cover a broad range of, of workloads. So for example, we just added the i4 iHost, which is uh, ideally for workloads that require a lot of CPU power, such as you mentioned it, AI workloads. Yeah, so I want to guess just specifically on the customer journey and their transformation. You know, we've been reporting on SiliconANGLE and theCUBE in the past couple of weeks in a big way that the ops teams are now the new devs. <laughs> I mean, that sounds <laughs> a little bit weird, but operation, IT operations is now part of a lot more data ops, security, writing code, composing, you know, with open source, a lot of great things are changing. Can you share specifically what customers are looking for when you say, as you guys come in and assess their needs, what are they doing? What are some of the things that they're doing with yeah. uh, VMware on AWS specifically? It's a little bit different. Can you share some of the yeah. highlights there? That, that's a great point. Um, because um, originally VMware and AWS came from very different directions when it comes to speaking people at customers. So for example, AWS very developer focused whereas VMware has uh, a very great footprint in uh, the IT ops area. And uh, usually these are very different, uh, uh, very different teams, groups, different cultures, but it's, it's getting together. Um, however, uh, we always try to address the customer needs, right? There are customers that want to build up a new application from the scratch and build resiliency, availability, recoverability, scalability into the application. Um, but there are still a lot of customers that say, well, we don't have all of the skills to redevelop everything, to refactor an application, uh, to make it uh, highly available. So we want to have all of that as a service, recoverability as a service, scalability as a service. We want to have this from the infrastructure. That was yeah. um, one of the uh, uh, unique selling points for VMware on-premise. And now we are bringing this into the cloud. Samir, talk about your perspective. I want to get your thoughts and not to yeah. take a tangent, but we had covered the AWS Remars, of, actually it was Amazon Remars, machine learning, mm -hmm. automation, um, robotics and space. It was really kind of the confluence of industrial IoT, software, physical. And so you know, when you look at like the IT operations piece becoming more software, you're seeing things about automation, but the skill gap is huge. So you're seeing low right. code, no code, automation, you know, hey Alexa, deploy a Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's coming, right? So we're seeing this kind of operating automation meets higher level services meets workloads. Can you unpack that and share your opinion on, on what you see there from an Amazon perspective and how it relates to this? Yeah, it, totally, right? And, and you know, look at it from the point of view where we said this is a jointly engineered solution, but it's not migrating to one option or the other option, right? It's more or less together. So even with VMware Cloud on AWS, yes, it is utilizing AWS infrastructure, but your environment is connected to that AWS VPC in your AWS account. So if you want to leverage any of the native AWS services, so any of the 200 plus AWS services, you have that option to do so. So that's going to give you that power to do certain things such as, for example, like how you mentioned with IoT, even with utilizing Alexa, or if there's any other service that you want to utilize, that's the joining point between both of the offerings right off the top. Though with digital transformation, right, you have to think about where it's not just about the technology, right? There's also where you want to drive growth in the underlying technology, even in your business. Leaders are looking to reinvent their business. They're looking to take different steps as far as pursuing a new strategy. Maybe it's a process. Maybe it's with the people, the culture, like how you said before, where people are coming in from a different background, right? They may not be used to the cloud. They may not be used to AWS services, but now you have that capability to mesh them together. Can, then can, also, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Finish, finish your thought. No, no, I was going to say what it also comes down to is you need to think about the operating model too, where it is a shift, right? Especially for that vSphere admin that's used to their on premises environment. Now with VMware Cloud on AWS, you have that ability to leverage the cloud, but 
the investment that you made in certain things as far as automation, even with monitoring, even with logging, yeah. you still have that methodology where you can utilize that in VMware Cloud on AWS too. Daniel, I want to get your thoughts on this because at, at Explore and, and, and after the event, now as we prep for KubeCon and reInvent coming up, the big AWS show, I had a couple conversations with a lot of the VMware customers and operators, and it's like hundreds of thousands of, 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 of users and millions of people talking about and, and peaked on VMware, interested in VMware. The common thread was one, one, one person said, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put my career in the next 10 to 15 years. And they've been very comfortable with VMware in the past, very loyal. And they're kind of talking about, I'm going to be the next cloud, but there's no like role yet. Architects, is it solution architect, SRE? So you're starting to see the psychology of the operators who now are going to try to make these career decisions. Like, how, what am I going to work on? And, it's, and that was kind of fuzzy, but I want to get your thoughts. How would you talk to that persona about the future of VMware on say cloud, for instance? What should they be thinking about? What's the opportunity and what's going to happen? So digital transformation definitely is a huge change for many organizations and uh, leaders are perfectly aware of what that means. And that also means in, in to, to some extent, concerns with your existing employees. Uh, concerns about, do I have to relearn everything? Uh, do I have to uh, acquire new skills and, and trainings? Is everything worthless? I learned over the last, 15 years of my career. And the answer is um, to make digital transformation a success, we need not just to talk about technology, but also about process, people, and culture. And this is where VMware really can help because if you are applying VMware Cloud on, a, uh, on AWS um, to your infrastructure, to your existing on-premise infrastructure, you do not need to change many things. You can use the same tools and skills. You can manage your virtual machines as you did in your on-premise environment. You can use the same managing and monitoring tools. If you have written, and many customers did this, if you have developed hundreds of, of scripts that automate tasks, and if you know how to troubleshoot things, um, then you can use all of that in VMware Cloud on AWS, and that uh, gives not just leaders, but but also the architects at customers, the operators at customers, uh, the confidence in, in such a complex project. The consistency, very key point, gives them the confidence to exactly. go. And, and then now that once they're confident, they can start committing themselves to new things. Samir, your reaction to this, because you know, on your side, yeah. you've got higher level services, you've got more performance at the hardware level. I mean, a lot of <laughs> improvements. So, okay, nothing's changed. I can still run my job. Now I got goodness on the other side. What's the upside? What's in it for the, for the, for the customer there? Yeah, so I think what it comes down to is they've already been so used to or entrenched with that VMware admin mentality, right? But now extending that to the cloud, that's where now you have that bridge between VMware Cloud on AWS to bridge that VMware knowledge with that AWS knowledge. So I will look at it from the point of view where now one has that capability and that ability to just learn about the cloud. But if they're comfortable with certain aspects, no one's saying you have to change anything. You can still leverage that, right? But now if you want to utilize any other AWS service in conjunction with that VM that resides maybe on-premises or even in VMware Cloud on AWS, you have that option to do so. So think about it where you have that ability to be someone who's curious and wants to learn. And then if you want to expand on the skills, you certainly have that capability to do so. Great stuff, I love, love that. Now that we're peeking behind the curtain here, I'd love to have you guys explain, because people want to know what goes on in, uh, behind the scenes. How does innovation get happen? How does it happen with the relationship? Can you take us through a day in the life of kind of what goes on to make innovation happen with the joint partnership? You guys just have a Zoom meeting? Do you guys fly out, you write code, do you ship thing? I mean, I'm making it up, but you get the idea. What's the, what's, how does it work? What's going on behind the scenes? So we hope to get uh, more frequently together in person, but of course uh, we had some difficulties over the last two to three years. So we are very used to Zoom conferences and, and Slack meetings. Um, uh, you always, uh, always have to have uh, the time difference in mind if you're working globally together. Uh, but what we try, for example, we have regu regular assembles uh, now also in person. 
um, uh, geo-based, so for EMEA, for the Americas, for APJ, uh, and we are bringing up interesting uh, customer situations, uh, architectural bits and pieces together. We are discussing it um, always uh, to share uh, and to contribute to our community. What's interesting, you know, as, a, as events are coming back, Samir, before you get you weigh in yeah. on this, I'll, I'll comment as the Cube's been going back out to events, we're hearing comments like, what, what pandemic? We were more productive in the pandemic. I mean, developers know how to work remotely and they've been on all the tools there, but then they get in person, they're happy to see people, but there's no one's, no one's really missed the beat. I mean, it seems to be very productive, uh, you know, workflow, not a lot of disruptions, more, if anything, productivity gains. Agreed, right? I think one of the key things to keep in mind is, you know, even if you look at AWS's and even Amazon's leadership principles, right? Customer obsession. That's key. VMware is carrying that forward as well, where we are working with our customers, like how Daniel said earlier, right? We might have meetings at different time zones. Maybe it's in person, maybe it's virtual, but together we're working to listen to our customers. You know, we're taking and capturing that feedback to drive innovation in VMware Cloud on AWS as well. But one of the key things to keep in mind is, yes, there been there has been the pandemic. We might have been disconnected to a certain extent, but together through technology, we've been able to still communicate, work with our customers, even with VMware in between with AWS and whatnot, we had that flexibility to innovate and continue that innovation. So even if you look at it from the point of view, right? VMware Cloud on AWS Outposts, that was something that customers have been asking for. We've been able to leverage the feedback and then continue to drive innovation even around VMware Cloud on AWS Outposts. So even with the on-premises environment, if you're looking to handle maybe data sovereignty or compliance needs, maybe you have low latency requirements. That's where certain advancements come into play, right? So the key thing is always to maintain that communication track. In our last segment we did uh, here on, the, on this showcase, we listed the accomplishments and they were pretty significant. I mean, GEO, you get the global rollouts of the relationship. It's just really been interesting and, and people can reference that, we won't get into it here. But I will ask um, you guys to comment on, as you guys continue to evolve the relationship, what's in it for the customer? What can they expect next? Because again, I think right now we're in, at a, an inflection point more than ever. What can people expect from the relationship and what's coming up with reInvent? Can you share a little bit of kind of what's coming down the pike? So uh, one of the most important things uh, we have announced this year and we will continue to evolve uh, into that direction is um, independent scale of storage. That absolutely was one of the most important items customer asked uh, us for uh, over the last years. Um, whenever, whenever you are requiring additional storage to host your virtual machines, you usually in VMware Cloud on AWS, you have to add additional nodes. Now we have three different node types with different ratios of compute storage and memory. But if you only require additional storage, you always have to get also additional compute and memory and you have to pay for it. And now with two solutions, which offer choice for the customers like um, um, FSX for NetApp ONTAP and uh, VMware Cloud Flex Storage, you now have two cost-effective um, opportunities to add storage to your virtual machines. And that offers opportunities for other instance types, maybe that don't have local storage. We are also very, very keen looking forward to uh, announcements, exciting announcements at the upcoming events. Samir, what's your what's your reaction take on the on what's coming down on your side? Yeah, I think one of the key things to keep in mind is you know we're looking to help our customers be agile and even scale with their needs, right? So with VMware Cloud on AWS, that's one of the key things that comes to mind, right? There are going to be announcements, innovations, and whatnot with upcoming events, but together we're able to leverage that to advance VMware Cloud on AWS. To Daniel's point, storage, for example, even with host offerings, and then even with decoupling storage from compute and memory, right? Now you have the flexibility where you can do all of that. So to look at it from the standpoint where now with 21 regions, where we have VMware Cloud on AWS available as well, where customers can utilize it as needed when needed, right? So it comes down to, you know, transformation will be there. Yes, there's going to be maybe where workloads have to be adapted, where they're utilizing certain AWS services, 
but you had that flexibility and option to do so. And I think with the continuing events, that's going to give us the options to even advance our own services together. Well, you guys are in the middle of it. You're in the trenches. You're making things happen. You've got a team of people working together. My final question is really more of a kind of a current situation, kind of future evolutionary um, thing that you haven't seen this before. I want to get both of your reaction to it. And we've been bringing this up in, in the open conversations on the cube is, in the old days, it's going back this generation, you had ecosystems. You had VMware had an ecosystem, AWS had an ecosystem. You know, we have a product, you have a product, biz dev deals happen, people sign relationships and they do business together and they, they sell each other's products or do some stuff. Now it's more about architecture because we're now in a distributed, large scale environment where the, the role of ecosystems are intertwining. And this, you guys are in the middle of two big ecosystems. You mentioned channel partners. You both have a lot of partners on both sides, they come together. So you have this now almost a three-dimensional or multi-dimensional ecosystem you know, interplay. What's your thoughts on this? And Because and, and, it's about the architecture. Integration is an, a value, not so much innovation is only, you got to do innovation, but when you do innovation, you got to integrate it, you got to connect it. So what is, how do you guys see this as, a, as an architectural thing? You start to see more technical business deals. So we are we are removing dependencies from individual uh, ecosystems and from individual vendors. So a customer no longer has to decide for one vendor and then it is a very expensive and uh, high effort uh, project to move away from that vendor, which ties customers even even closer to specific vendors. We are removing these obstacles. So with uh, VMware Cloud on AWS moving to the cloud, Firstly, it's, it's not a dead end. Uh, if you decide at one point in time because of latency requirements or uh, maybe some uh, compliance requirements, you need to move back into on-premise. You can do this. If you decide you want to stay with some of your services on-premise and just run a couple of dedicated services in the cloud, you can do this and you can uh, man manage it through a single pane of glass. That's quite important. So cloud is no longer a dead end. It's no longer a binary decision, whether it's on-premise or the cloud, it, it is the cloud. And the second thing is uh, you can choose the best of both worlds, right? If you're migrating virtual machines that have been running in your on-premise environment to VMware Cloud on AWS, by the way, in a very, very fast, cost-effective and safe way, uh, then you can enrich, later on, enrich these virtual machines with services that are offered by AWS, more than 200 different services, ranging from uh, object-based storage, load balancing, and so on. So uh, it's an endless uh, uh, endless possibility. We, we call that super cloud in, in, a, in a way that we'd be generically defining it where everyone's innovating, but yet there's some common services, but the differentiation comes from innovation where the lock-in is the value, not some spec. Right, Samir, this is going to, where cloud is right now. You guys are, are not commodity. Amazon's completely differentiating, but there's some commodity things happening. You got storage, you got compute, but then you got now advances in all areas, but partners innovate with you on their terms. Absolutely. And everybody wins. Yeah, 100% agree with you. I think one of the key things, you know, as Daniel mentioned before is where it, it, it's a cross education where there might be someone who's more proficient on the cloud side with AWS, maybe more proficient with the VMware technology. But then for partners, right, they bridge that gap as well where they come in and they might have a specific niche or expertise where their background, where they can help our customers go through that transformation. So then that comes down to, hey, maybe I don't know how to connect to the cloud. Maybe I don't know what the networking constructs are. Maybe I can leverage that partner. That's one aspect to go about it. Now, maybe you migrated that workload to VMware Cloud on AWS. Maybe you want to leverage any of the native AWS services or even just off the top, 200 plus AWS services, right? But it comes down to that skill set, right? So again, solutions architecture at the back of the, back of the day, end of the day, what it comes down to is being able to utilize the best of both worlds. That's what we're giving our customers at the end of the day. I mean, I just think it's, it's, a, it's a refactoring and innovation opportunity at all levels. I think now more than ever, you can take advantage of each other's ecosystems and partners yeah. and technologies and change how things get done with keeping the consistency. 
I mean, Daniel, you nailed that, right? I mean, you don't have to do anything. You can still run <laughs> vSphere the way you're working on it and now do yeah. new things. This is kind of a cultural shift. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if, if you look, um, not, every custo not every customer, not every organization has the resources to refactor and re-platform everything. And uh, we, gave, we give them a very simple and easy way to move workloads to the cloud, uh, simply run them. And at the same time, they can free up resources to develop new innovations and, and uh, grow their business. Awesome, Samir, thank you for coming on. Daniel, thank you for coming thank to you. Germany. Oktoberfest, I know it's evening over there. Your weekend's here and thank you for spending the time. Samir, final, give you the final word. Uh, AWS reInvent's coming up, preparing. We're going to have an exclusive with Adam, but Friar would do a curtain raise, do a little preview. Uh, what's coming down on your side with the relationship and what can we expect to hear about uh, what you got going on at reInvent this year, the big show? Yeah, so I think, you know, Daniel hit upon some of the key points, but what I will say is we do have, for example, specific sessions, both that VMware is driving and then also that AWS is driving. We do have even where we have what are called chalk talks. So I would say, and then even with workshops, right? So even with the customers, the attendees who are there and whatnot, if they're looking for to sit and listen to a session, yes, that's there. But if they want to be hands-on, that is also there too. So personally for me as an IT background, you know, been in the sysadmin world and whatnot, being hands-on, that's one of the key things that I personally am looking forward. But I think that's one of the key ways just to learn and get familiar with the technology. Yeah, reinvents an amazing show for the in-person. You guys nail it every year. We'll have three sets this year at theCUBE. It's becoming popular with more and more content. You guys got live streams going on, a lot of content, a lot of media. Um, so thanks, thanks for sharing that. Samir, Daniel, thank you for coming on on this part of the showcase episode of really the customer successes with VMware Cloud on AWS, really accelerating business transformation with AWS and VMware. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, thanks for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE showcase, accelerating business transformation with VMware Cloud on AWS. It's a solution innovation conversation with two great guests, Fred Worden, VP of Commercial Services at AWS, and Narayan Bardawaj, who's the VP and General Manager of Cloud Solutions at VMware. Gentlemen, thanks for uh, joining me on the showcase. Great to be here. Hey, thanks for having us on. It's a great topic. You know, we, we've we been covering this VMware cloud on AWS since, since the launch going back. And it's been amazing to watch the evolution from people saying, oh, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's, what's, the, what's this mean? Uh, and, and the press were, were, were kind of not really on board with kind of the vision, but as it played out, as you guys had announced together, it did work out great for VMware, it did work out great for AWS, and it continues to years later. And I want to just get an update from you guys on where you guys see this has been going, I'll see multiple years. Where is the evolution of the solution as we are right now coming off uh, VMware Explorer just recently and going into reInvent, uh, which is only a couple of weeks away. Uh, this feels like tomorrow, but uh, you know, as, as we prepare, a lot going on. Where are we with the evolution of the solution? I mean, first thing I want to say is, you know, October 2016 was a seminal moment in the history of IT, right? When Pat Gelsinger and Andy Jassy came together to announce this. And I think, John, you were there at the time I was there. It was a great, great moment. We launched the solution in 2017, the year after that at VMworld, back when we called it VMworld. I think we've gone from strength to strength. One of the things that has really mattered to us is We've learned from AWS also in the process is this notion of working backwards. So we're really, really focused on customer feedback as we build the service offering, now five years old. Pretty remarkable journey. Uh, you know, in the first years, we tried to get across all the regions. Um, you know, that was a big focus because there was so much demand for it. In the second year, we started going really on enterprise grade features. We invented this pretty awesome feature called stretch clusters, where you could stretch a vSphere cluster using vSAN NSX across two AZs in the same region. Pretty phenomenal four nines of availability that applications start, started to get with that particular feature. And we kept moving forward, all kinds of integration with AWS Direct Connect, transit gateways, with our own advanced networking capabilities. Uh, you know, along the way, disaster recovery, we punched out two new, two new services just focused on that. And then more recently, we launched our Outposts partnership. We were up on stage at reInvent, uh, again with Pat and Andy announcing AWS Outposts. 
and the VMware flavor of that, VMware Cloud and AWS Outposts. Uh, I think it's been significant growth in our federal sector as well with our FedRAMP high certification more recently. So all in all, we are super excited. We're five years old. The customer momentum is really, really strong and we are scaling the service massively across all geos and industries. That's great, great update. And I think one of the things that you mentioned was how the advantages you guys got from that uh, relationship. Uh, and, and this has kind of been the theme for AWS, man, since I can remember from day one, Fred, you guys do the heavy lifting as, as it's always say for the customers here, VMware comes on board, takes advantage of the AWS and kind of just doesn't miss, miss a beat, continues to move their workloads that everyone's using, you know, vSphere. And these are, these are big workloads on AWS. What's the AWS perspective on this? Uh, how well, do you see it? Yeah. Uh, it's pretty fascinating to watch how fast customers can actually transform and move. When you take the, the skill set that they're familiar with and the advanced capabilities that they've been using on-prem and then overlay it on top of the AWS infrastructure that's that's evolving quickly and, and building out new hardware and new instances we'll talk about. Uh, but that combined experience between both of us uh, on a jointly engineered solution uh, to bring the best security and the best features that really matter for those workloads uh, drive a lot of efficiency and speed for the for the customer. So it's been well received and the partnership is stronger than ever from an engineering standpoint, from a business standpoint. And obviously it's been very interesting to look at just how we stay day one in terms of looking at new features and work and, and responding to what customers want. So pretty Pretty excited about just seeing the transformation and the speed that which customers can move to uh, VMC. Yeah, that's a great value proposition. We've been talking about that in context to anyone building on top of the cloud, they can have their own super cloud as we call it. If you take advantage of all the CapEx and, and investment Amazon's made and AWS has made and, and, and continues to make in performance, IaaS and PaaS, all great stuff. Uh, I have to ask you guys both, as you guys see this going to the next level, um, what are some of the differentiations you see around the service compared to other options in the market? What makes it different? What's the combination? You mentioned jointly engineered. Um, what are some of the key uh, differentiators of the service compared to others? Yeah, I think one of the key things Fred talked about is this jointly engineered notion. Right from day one, we were the early adopters of the AWS Nitro platform, right? The reinvention of EC2 back five years ago. And so we've been, you know, having a very, very strong engineering partnership at that level. I think from a VMware customer standpoint, you get the full software defined data center, compute storage networking on EC2 bare metal across all regions. You can scale that elastically up and down. It's pretty phenomenal just having that consistency globally, right? On AWS, EC2, um, uh, global regions. Now, the other thing that's a real differentiator for us, as customers tell us about is, this whole notion of a managed service, right? And this was somewhat new to VMware. But we took away the pain of uh, this undifferentiated heavy lifting where customers had to provision, rack stack hardware, configure the software on top, and then upgrade the software and the security patches on top. So we took, up, took away all of that pain as customers transitioned to VMware Cloud and AWS. In fact, my favorite story from last year, when we were all going through the Log4j debacle, the industry was just going through that, right? Yeah. Favorite proof point from customers was, before they could even raise uh, this issue to us, we sent them a notification saying, uh, we already patched all of your systems, no action from you. And the customers were super thrilled. I mean, these are large banks, many other customers around the world, super thrilled they had to take no action, but a pretty incredible industry challenge that we were all facing. No, right. that's, so, a great, um, that's a great point. You know, the whole managed service piece brings up the security and you're kind of teasing at it, but you know, there's always vulnerabilities that emerge when you're doing complex logic. And as you grow your solutions, there's more bits, you know, Fred, we were commenting that before we came on camera, there's more bits than ever before and, and at, at the physics layer too, as well as the software. So you never know when there's going to be a, a zero day vulnerability out there. Uh, just, it happens. We saw one with Fortinet this week, um, this came out of the woodwork, but moving fast on those patches is huge. Um, this brings up the whole support angle. I wanted to ask you about how you guys are are doing that as well because to me we see the value when we hit, when we talk to customers on the cube about this you know it was a real real easy understanding of how what the cloud means to them with VMware now with the AWS but the question that comes up that we want to get more clarity on is how do you guys handle the support together well what's interesting about this is that it's 
it's done mutually. We have dedicated support teams on both sides that work together pretty seamlessly to make sure that whether there's a issue at any layer, including all the way up into the app layer, as you think about some of the other workloads like SAP, we'll go end to end and make sure that we support the customer, uh, regardless of where uh, the particular issue might be for them. Uh, and on top of that, we look at where where we're improving reliability in, in, as a first order of, of principle between both companies. So from an availability and reliability standpoint, it's, it's top of mind and no matter where the particular uh, item might land, we're gonna go help the customer resolve that. Works really well. On the VMware side, what's been the feedback there? What's the, what are some of the updates? Yeah, I think, uh, look, I mean, VMware owns and operates the service, but we have a phenomenal back-end relationship with AWS. Customers call VMware for the service for any issues. Uh, and then we have a awesome relationship with AWS on the back end for support issues or any hardware issues, capacity management that we jointly do, right? All of the hard problems that customers don't have to worry about. Uh, I think on the front end, we also have a really good group of solution architects across the companies that help to really explain the solution, do complex things like cloud migration, which is much, much easier with VMware Cloud and AWS. Uh, you know, we're presenting that easy button to the public cloud in many ways. And so we have a whole technical audience across the two companies that are working with customers every single day. You know, you had mentioned, I've got a list here, some of the innovations, the, you mentioned the stretch clustering, you know, getting the geos working, advanced network disaster recovery, um, you know, Fed, Fed ramp, uh, public sector certifications, outposts, all good. You guys are checking the boxes every year. You got a good, good accomplishments list there on the VMware AWS side here in this relationship. The question that I'm interested in is what's next? What uh, recent innovations are you doing? Are you making investments in? What's on the list this year? What items will be next year? How do you see the, the new things, the list of accomplishments? People want to know what's next. They don't want to see stagnant uh, uh, growth here. They want to see more action, you know, as, as uh, cloud kind of <laughs> continues to scale and modern applications is cloud native, you're seeing more and more containers, more and more, you know, more CF, CI, CD pipelining with, with modern apps, put more pressure on the system. What's new? What's the new innovations? Absolutely, and I think as a five-year-old service offering, uh, innovation is top of mind for us every single day. So just to call out a few recent innovations that we announced in San Francisco at VMware Explore. Um, first of all, uh, our new platform, i4i.metal, it's isolate based, it's pretty awesome. It's the latest and greatest, uh, with all the speeds and feeds that you would expect from VMware and AWS at this point in our relationship. We announced two different storage options. This notion of working from customer feedback and allowing customers even more price reductions, really take off that storage and park it externally, right? And you know, separate that from compute. So we have two different storage offerings there. One is with AWS FSx with NetApp ONTAP, which brings in our NetApp partnership as well into the equation and really get that NetApp base really excited about this offering as well. And the second storage offering for VMware Cloud Flex Storage, VMware's own managed storage offering. Beyond that, we've done a lot of other innovations as well. I really wanted to talk about VMware Cloud Flex Compute, where Previously, customers could only scale by hosts. And a host is 36 to 48 cores, give or take. But with VMware Cloud Flex Compute, we are now allowing this notion of a resource-defined compute model where customers can just get exactly the vCPU memory and storage that maps to the applications, however small they might be. So this notion of granularity is really a big innovation that, that we are launching in the market this year. And then last but not least, uh, talk about ransomware. Of course, it's a hot topic in the industry. Uh, we are seeing many, many customers ask for this. We are happy to announce a new ransomware recovery with our VMware Cloud DR solution. Uh, a lot of innovation there and the way we are able to do machine learning and make sure the workloads that are recovered from uh, snapshots and backups are actually safe to use. So there's a lot of differentiation on that front as well. Um, a lot of networking innovations with Project North Star for ability to have layer four through layer seven uh, you know, yeah. new SaaS services in that area as well. Keep in mind that the service already supports managed Kubernetes for containers, 
it's built in to the same clusters that have virtual machines. And so this notion of a single service with a great TCO for VMs and containers is sort of at the heart of our offering. Yeah. The networking side certainly is a hot area to keep innovating on every year. It's the same, same conversation, get better, faster, networking, more, more options there. The flex compute's interesting. If you don't mind me getting a quick clarification, could you explain the difference between resource defined versus hardware defined? Because this is kind of what we had saw at Explore coming out, that notion um, of resource defined versus hardware defined. What's the, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, I think we've been super successful in this hardware defined notion where we're scaling by the hardware unit uh, that we present as software-defined data centers, right? And so that's been super successful. But we, you know, customers wanted more, especially customers in different parts of the world wanted to start even smaller and grow even more incrementally, right? Lower their costs even more. And so this is the part where resource-defined starts to be very, very interesting as a way to think about, you know, here's my bag of resources exactly based on what the customer's request. For five virtual machines, five containers, it's sized exactly for that. And then as utilization grows, we elastically, behind the scenes, we're able to grow it through policies. So that's a whole different dimension. It's a whole different service offering that adds value. When customers are comfortable, they can go from one to the other. They can go back to that host-based model if they so choose to and there's a jump off point across these two different economic models. It's kind of cloud flexibility right there. I like the name. Fred, let's get into some of the uh, examples of customers, if you don't mind. Let's get into some of the, uh, we have some time. I want to unpack a little bit of what's going on with the customer deployments. One of the things we've heard, um, again, on theCUBE is from customers is they like the clarity of the relationship. They love the cloud positioning of it. And then what happens is they lift and shift the workloads and it's like, feels great. It's just like we're running VMware. Uh, on AWS, and then they would start consuming higher level services, kind of that adoption next level happens. Um, and because it's, it's in the cloud. So, so can you guys take us through some recent examples of customer wins or deployments where they're using VMware Cloud on AWS on getting started and then how do they progress once they're there? How does it evolve? Can you just walk us through a couple of use cases? Sure. Um, there's a, well, there's a couple. One, it's pretty interesting that, you know, like you said, as there's more and more bits, you need better and better hardware and networking. And we're super excited about the I-4 uh, and the capabilities there in terms of doubling and or tripling what we're doing around a lower variability and latency and just improving all the speeds. But what customers are doing with it, like the college in New Jersey, um, they're accelerating their deployment on, a, on onboarding over like 7,400 students over a six to eight month period. And they've really realized a ton of savings. But what's interesting is where and how they can actually grow onto additional native services too. So connectivity to any other services is available as they start to move and migrate into this. Um, the, the options there obviously are tied to all the innovation that we have across any services, whether it's containerized uh, and with what they're doing with Tanzu or with any other container and or uh, services within AWS. So there's there's some pretty interesting scenarios where that data and or the processing, which is moved quickly with full compliance, whether it's in like healthcare or regulatory business, um, is, is allowed to then consume and use things, for example, with text extract or any other really cool service that has, you know, monthly and quarterly innovations. So there's things that you just can't, could not do before that are coming out uh, and saving customers money and building innovative applications on top of their, uh, their current uh, app base in, in a rapid fashion. So pretty excited about it. There's a lot of examples. I think I don't, probably don't have time to go into too, too many here, yeah. uh, but that's actually the best part is listening to customers and seeing how many net new services and new applications are they actually building on top of this platform. Now, Ryan, what's your perspective from the VMware side? Cause you, know, you guys have now a lot of headroom to offer customers with Amazon's you know, higher level services and or whatever's homegrown, whatever's being rolled out. Cause you now have a lot of hybrid too. So, so what's, your, what's your take on what, what's happening in, with customers? I mean, it's been phenomenal. The, the customer adoption of this, and you know, banks and many other highly sensitive verticals are running production grade applications, tier one applications on the service over the last five years. And so, you know, I have a couple of really good examples. 
S&P Global is one of my favorite examples. Large bank, uh, they merged with IHS market, big sort of conglomeration now. Both customers were using VMware Cloud and AWS in different ways. And with the, uh, with the use case, you know, one of their use cases was, how do I just respond to these global opportunities without having to invest in physical data centers? And then how do I migrate and consolidate all my data centers across the globe, of which there were many? And so one specific example for this company was how they migrated 1,000 workloads to VMware Cloud and AWS in just six weeks. Pretty phenomenal if you think about everything that goes into a cloud migration process, people process technology. And the beauty of the technology going from VMware point A to VMware point B, the, the lowest cost, lowest risk approach uh, to adopting VMware Cloud and AWS. So that's uh, you know, one of my favorite examples. There are many other examples across other verticals that we continue to see. Um, the good thing is we're seeing rapid expansion across the globe. We're constantly entering new markets uh, with a limited number of regions and progressing our roadmap there. Yeah. It's great to see, I mean, the data center migrations go from months, many, many months to weeks. It's interesting um, to see some of those success stories. So what, congratulations. One of the other, of the other uh, interesting, uh, uh, fascinating uh, uh, benefits is the sustainability improvement in terms of being green. So the efficiency gains that we have both in current uh, generation and new generation processors and everything that we're doing to make sure that when a customer can be elastic, they're also saving power, which is really critical in a lot of regions worldwide at this point in time, they're, they're seeing those benefits. If you're running really inefficiently in your own data center, uh, that is just a, a, a not a great use of power. So uh, the actual calculators and the benefits to uh, these workloads is, are pretty phenomenal just on being more green, which I, I like. We just all need to do our part there, and, and this is a big part of it here. It's um, a huge, it's a huge well. point about the sustainability, Fred. I'm glad you called that out. The other one I would say is supply chain issues. Another one you see that constrains. I can't buy hardware. And the third one is really obvious, but no one really talks about it. It's security, right? I mean, um, I remember interviewing Stephen Schmidt with that AWS and many years ago. Um, this is like 2013, and. Um, you know, at that time, people were saying the cloud's not secure, and he's like, "Listen, it's more secure in the cloud than on-premise." And if you look at the security breaches, it's all about the on-premise data center vulnerabilities, not so much hardware. So there's a lot you got to the, the, the stay current on on the isolation. There is hard. So I think I think the security and supply chain, Fred, is, is another one. Yeah. Do you agree? I, I absolutely agree. Uh, it's, it's hard to manage supply chain nowadays. Uh, we put a lot of effort into that. And I think we have a great ability to forecast and make sure that we can lean in and, and have the resources that are available and run them, run them more efficiently. Yeah. Um, and then, like you said, on the security point, security is job one. It is, it is the only P1. And if you think of how we build our infrastructure from Nitro all the way up and how we respond and work with our partners and our customers, uh, there's nothing more important. And Narayan, your point earlier about the managed service, patching and being on top of things is really going to get better. All right, final question. I really want to thank you for your time on this showcase. It's really been a great conversation. Uh, Fred, you had made a comment earlier. I want to kind of end with a kind of a curveball and put you guys on the spot. We're talking about a modern, a new modern shift. It's another, we're seeing another inflection point. We've been documenting it. It's almost like cloud hitting another inflection point um, with application and open source growth uh, significantly at the app layer continue to put a lot of pressure and, and innovation in the infrastructure side. So the question is for you guys each to answer is, what's the same and what's different in today's market? So it's kind of like, we want more of the same here, but also things have changed radically and better here. What are the, what's, what's changed for better and where, what's still the same kind of thing hanging around that people are focused on? Can you share your perspective? I'll, 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 I'll tackle it. Um, you know, uh, businesses are complex and they're often unique. Uh, that That's the same. Uh, what's changed is how fast you can innovate. The ability to combine managed services and new innovative services and build new applications is so much faster today, leveraging world-class hardware uh, that you don't have to worry about that's elastic. You, you could not do that even five, 10 years ago to the degree you can today, especially with the innovation. 
So innovation is accelerating uh, at a rate that most people can't even comprehend and understand the, the set of services that are available to them. It's really fascinating to see what a one pizza team of, of engineers can go actually develop in a week. It is phenomenal. So super excited about this space and it's only going to continue to accelerate. That, that's my take. Narayan. You got a lot of yeah. platform to compete on with Amazon. You got a lot to build on. Narayan, on your side, what's your, what's your answer to that question? I think we are seeing a lot of innovation with new applications that customers are constantly doing. I think uh, what we see is this whole notion of how do you go from desktop to production to the secure supply chain? And how can we truly uh, you know, build on the agility that developers desire? and build all the security and the pipelines to energize that move to production quickly and efficiently. I think we, we are seeing, uh, you know, we are at the very start of that sort of, uh, of journey. Um, of course, we've invested in Kubernetes, the means to an end, but there's so much more beyond that's happening in the industry. And I think we're at the very, very beginning of this transformation, this enterprise transformation that many of our customers are going through and we're inherently part of it. Well, gentlemen, I really appreciate that. We're seeing the same thing. It's more the same here on, you know, solving these complexities with abstractions, whether it's, you know, higher level services with large scale infrastructure um, at, at your fingertips, infrastructure as code, infrastructure to be provisioned, serverless, all the good stuff happening, Fred, with AWS on your side. And we're seeing customers resonate with this idea of being an operator again, being a cloud operator and developer. So the developer ops is kind of, <laughs> DevOps is kind of changing too. So all for the better. Thank you for spending the time and we're seeing again that traction with the VMware customer base and AWS getting, getting along great together. So thanks for sharing your perspectives. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay, this is theCUBE and AWS VMware Showcase accelerating business transformation. VMware Cloud on AWS, jointly engineered solution bringing innovation to the VMware customer base going to the cloud and beyond. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the special CUBE presentation of Accelerating Business Transformation on VMC on AWS. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We have Ashish Dawan, Director of Global Sales and Go-To-Market for VMware Cloud on AWS. This is a great showcase and should be a lot of fun. Ashish, thanks for coming on. Hi John, thank you so much. So VMware Cloud on AWS has been well documented as a big success for VMware and AWS as customers move their workloads into the cloud, IT operations of VMware customers has signaling a lot of change. This is changing the landscape globally as on cloud migration and beyond. What's your take on this? Can you open this up with the most important story around VMC on AWS? Yes, John, uh, the most important thing for our customers today is the, how they can safely and swiftly move their ID infrastructure and applications to the cloud. Now, VMware Cloud and AWS is a service that allows all vSphere-based workloads to move to cloud safely, swiftly, and reliably. Banks can move their core, core banking platforms, insurance companies move their core insurance platforms, telcos move their OSS, BSS plat, uh, platforms, uh, government organizations are moving their citizen engagement platforms using VMC on AWS because this is one platform that allows you to move it, move their VMware-based platforms very fast. Um, migrations can happen in a matter of days instead of months. Uh, extremely securely, it's a VMware managed service. It's very secure and highly reliable. It gets the, the reliability of the underlying AWS infrastructure along with it. So win-win. Uh, from a customer's perspective. You know, we reported on this big news in 2016 with Andy Jassy and Pat Gelsinger at the time. A lot of people said it was a bad deal. It turned out to be a great deal because not only could VMware customers actually have a cloud, migrate to the cloud, do it safely, which was their number one concern. They didn't want to have disruption to their operations, but also position themselves for what's beyond just shifting to the cloud. So I have to ask you, since you got the finger on the pulse here, what are we seeing in the market when it comes to migrating uh, and moder modernizing in the cloud? Because that's the next step. They go to the cloud, you guys have done that, doing it. Then they go, I got to modernize, which means kind of upgrading or refactoring. What's your take on that? Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, the first step is to help our customers assess their infrastructure 
and licensing and the entire IT operations. Once we've done the assessment, we then create their migration plans. A lot of our customers are at that inflection point. They're they're looking at their real estate, um, uh, data center real estate. They're looking at their contracts with co-location vendors. They really want to exit their data centers. Right, And VMware Cloud and AWS is a perfect solution for customers who want to exit their data centers. Migrate these applications onto the AWS platform using VMC on AWS, get rid of uh, additional real estate overheads, power overheads, uh, be uh, socially and environmentally conscious by doing that as well. Right, So that's the migration story. But to your point, it doesn't end there. Right, modernization is a critical aspect of the entire customer journey as, as well. Customers, once they've migrated their ID applications and infrastructure on cloud, get access to all the modernization services that AWS has. They can connect easily to our data lake services, to our AIML services, to custom databases. Right, they can decide which applications they want to keep and which applications they want to refactor. They want to take decisions on containerization, take decisions on serverless computing once they've come to the cloud. But the most important thing is to take that first step. You know, exit their data centers, come to AWS using VMC on AWS, and then a whole host of modernization options are available to them. Yeah, I got to say, we had this right on this on this story because you just pointed out a big thing, which was first order of business is to make sure to leverage the on-prem investments that those customers made and then migrate to the cloud where they can maintain their applications, their data, their infrastructure operations that they're used to, and then be in position to start um, getting modern. So I have to ask you, how are you guys specific, or how is VMware Cloud on AWS addressing these needs of the customers? Because what happens next is something that needs to happen faster. And sometimes the skills might not be there because if they're running old school IT ops, now they got to come in and jump in, they're going to use a data cloud, they're going to want to use all kinds of machine learning and there's a lot of great goodness going on above the stack there. So as you move with the higher level services, you know, it's a no brainer obviously, but they're not, it's not yesterday's higher level services in the cloud. So how, are, how is this being addressed? Absolutely. I think you hit upon a very important point and that is skills, right? Um, when our customers are operating some of the most critical applications, I just mentioned core banking, core insurance, et cetera, there are most of the core applications that our customers have across industries, like even, even large scale ERP systems, they're actually sitting on VMware's vSphere platform, right? Now, when the customer wants to migrate these to cloud, one of the key bottlenecks they face is skill sets. They have the trained manpower for these core applications. But for these high level services, they may not, right? So the first order of business is to help them ease this migration pain as much as possible by not wanting them to, to upskill immediately. And VMware Cloud and AWS exactly does that. I mean, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to create new skill set for doing this, right? Their existing skill sets suffice. But at the same time, it gives them that, that leeway to build that skills roadmap for their team. And AWS is invested in that, right? Yeah. We want to help them build those skills in the high level services, be it AML, be it, uh, be it IoT, uh, be it uh, data lake and analytics. We want to invest in them and we help our customers through that. So that yeah. ultimately, the ultimate goal of making them cloud data is, uh, is, is front and center. I want to get into some of the use cases and success stories, but I want to just reiterate, hit back your point on the skill thing, because if you look at what you guys have done at AWS, you've essentially, and Andy Jassy used to talk about this all the time when I would interview him, and now last year Adam was saying the same thing, you guys do all the heavy lifting. But if you're a VMware customer, user or operator, you're used to things. You don't have to be relearn to be a cloud architect now, you're already in the game. So this is like almost like a instant path to cloud skills for the VMware, there's hundreds of thousands of, of VMware uh, architects and operators that now instantly become cloud architects literally overnight. Can you respond to that? Do you agree with that? And then give an example. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, if you have skills on the VMware platform, uh, you know, migrating to AWS using VMware Cloud and AWS 
is absolutely possible. You don't have to really change the skills. The operations are exactly the same. Uh, the management systems are exactly the same. Uh, so you don't really have to change anything. But the advantage is that you get access to all the other AWS services. So you are instantly able to integrate with other AWS services and you become a cloud architect immediately, right? Um, you're able to solve some of the critical problems that your underlying IT uh, infrastructure has immediately using this. And I think that's a great uh, value proposition for our customers uh, to use this service. And just one more point, I want to just get into something that's really kind of inside baseball or nuanced. VMC or VMware Cloud on AWS means something. Could you take a minute to explain what on AWS means? Just because you're like hosting and using Amazon as a, as a work, workload, being on AWS means something specific in your world. Being VMC on AWS mean? Yes, uh, this is a great question, by the way. Um, um, you know, on AWS, uh, means that you know VMware's vSphere platform is is a is an iconic uh, enterprise virtualization software. It's got you know a disproportionately high uh, market share across industries. So when we wanted to create a cloud product along with them, uh, obviously our um, aim was for them for the for this platform to have the goodness of the AWS underlying infrastructure. Right, and and therefore, when we created this uh, VMware Cloud uh, solution, it uh, it literally used the AWS platform underneath, right? And that's why it's called a VM VMware Cloud on AWS, using using the 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 wide um, portfolio of our regions across the world uh, and the strength of the underlying infrastructure, the reliability and uh, uh, and, and sustainability that it offers. Uh, and therefore this product uh, is called VMC on AWS. It's a distinction I think is worth noting and it does reflect engineering and some levels of integration that go well beyond just having a SaaS app and, and basic Absolutely. platform as a service or past services. So I just want to make sure that now SuperCloud, we'll talk about that a little bit in another interview, but I got to get one more question in before we get into the use cases and customer success stories is in, in most of the VM world, VMware world, um, in that IT world that used to, when you heard migration, people would go, oh my God, that's going to take months. And when I hear about um, um, moving stuff around and doing cloud native, the first reaction people might have is complexity. So two questions for you before we move on to the next uh, talk track. Complexity, how are you addressing the complexity issue? And how long do these migrations take? Uh, is it easy, is it hard? I mean, you know, the, the knee jerk reaction is month. They're, they're used to that. If they're dealing with Oracle or other old school vendors, like they're like the old guard would be like, takes a year to move stuff around. So can you comment on complexity and speed? Yeah, so the first first thing is complexity. And you know, what makes uh, what makes anything complex is if you're, if you're required to acquire new skill sets, or you've got to, uh, if you're required to manage something differently. And as far as VMware Cloud and AWS, on both these aspects, you don't have to do anything, right? You don't have to acquire new skill sets. Your existing ID operation skill sets on, on VMware's platforms are absolutely fine. And you don't have to manage it any differently like, uh, than what you're managing your, your uh, ID infrastructure today. So on both these aspects, it's exactly the same. And therefore, it is absolutely not complex. Um, uh, uh, as far as as far as uh, as far as VMware Cloud and AWS is concerned, and the other thing is speed. Now this is where the huge differentiation is. You would have seen that uh, you know large banks and large telcos have now moved their workloads, uh, you know, literally in days instead of months, because um, uh, because of VMware Cloud and AWS. A lot of time customers come to us with specific deadlines because they want to exit their data centers on a particular date. And what happens? VMware Cloud and AWS is called upon to do that migration, right? So speed is absolutely critical. The reason is also exactly the same because you're using the exactly the same platform, the same management systems, people are available to you, you're able to migrate quickly, yeah. right? I would just reference uh, recently we got uh, an award from um, President Zelensky of Ukraine for uh, you know migrating their entire ID uh, digital infrastructure 
um, uh, and and that that happened because uh, they were using VMware Cloud and AWS, and it happened very swiftly. That's a great example. I mean, it's, that's one political, but the economic advantage of getting out of the data center could be national security. You mentioned Ukraine. I mean, obviously that's we see bombing and death over there. So clearly that's a critical crown jewel for their running their operations, which is, you know, you know, world mission critical. So um, great stuff. I love the speed thing. I think that's a huge one. Let's get into some of the use cases. One of them is the first one I wanted to talk about was we used to hit on data, data center migration. Um, it could be financial reasons on a downturn or our, our market growth. People can make money by shifting to the cloud, either saving money or making money. You win on both sides. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a recession proof, if you will, cloud is. So um, use case for number one, data center migration. Take us through what that looks like. Give an example of a success. Uh, take us through a, a day in the life of a data center migration in, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I can give you an example of of a, of a large bank um, who uh, decided to migrate. Um, um, uh, you know, their uh, all their data centers uh, outside their existing uh, infrastructure, um, and they, they had they had a set timeline, right? Uh, they had a set timeline to migrate the. the uh, uh, they were coming up on a renewal, and they wanted to make sure that this set timeline is met. Um, we did a, a complete assessment of their infrastructure. We did a complete assessment of their IT applications. Uh, more than 80% of their IT applications are the underlying v, uh, vSphere platform. Uh, and we, we thought that the right solution for them in the timeline that they wanted, right, is VMware Cloud and AWS. And obviously it was a large bank, uh, it uh, wanted to do it safely and securely. Uh, it wanted to have uh, it completely managed, and therefore VMware Cloud and AWS, uh, you know, ticked all the boxes as far as that is concerned. I'll be happy to report that uh, the large bank has moved most of their applications on AWS, uh, exiting three of their data centers, and they'll be exiting. 12 more very soon. So that's a great example of uh, of, the, of the large bank exiting data centers. There's another uh, corollary to that. Not only did they manage to um, manage to exit their data centers and of course uh, be more agile, but they also met their sustainability goals. Their board of directors had given them goals to be carbon neutral by 2025. They found out that 35% of all their carbon foot footprint was in their data centers. And if they move their, uh, uh, their ID infrastructure to cloud, they would severely reduce the, uh, the carbon footprint, which is 35% down to 17 or 18%. Right, and that met their uh, their 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 sustainability targets and their commitment to the carb to being carbon neutral as well. And that they and they shift that to you guys. Would you guys take that burden, the heavy lifting there? And you guys have a sustainability story, uh, which is a whole nother showcase in and of itself. We can exactly, and, and because of the scale of our of our operations, we are able to we are able to work on that um, uh, uh, really well as well. All right, so I love the data migration. I think that's got real proof points. You got, I can save money. I can I can then move and position my applications into the cloud for that reason and other reasons. There's a lot of other reasons to do that. But now mm -hmm. listen to what you mentioned earlier was, okay, data migration, clearly a use case. Uh, and you laid out some successes. I'm sure there's a zillion others, but then the next step comes. Now you got cloud architects becoming minted every, and you got managed services and higher level services. What happens next? Can you give us an example of the use case of the modernization around the next gen workloads, next gen applications? We're starting to see, you know, things like data clouds, not data warehouses, we're not going to data clouds. It's going to be all kinds of clouds. These next gen apps are pure digital transformation in action. Take us through a use case of the, how you guys make that happen with a success story. Yes, uh, absolutely. And this is um, this is an amazing success story. And the customer here is uh, S&P uh, Global Ratings. As you know, S&P Global Ratings is uh, is the world leader as far as uh, global ratings, global credit ratings is concerned. And for them, you know, the last couple of years have been tough as far as hardware procurement is concerned. Right? Uh, the pandemic has really upended the the supply chain, uh, and it was taking a lot of time to procure hardware. You know, configure it in time, uh, make sure that that's reliable, and then, you know, distribute it in uh, the wide uh, um, 
variety of uh, of uh, of uh, offices and locations that they have and uh, they came to us uh, we we did again a a, 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 la- a fairly large comprehensive assessment of their id infrastructure and their licensing contracts and we also found out that vmware cloud and aws is uh, the right solution for them so we worked there migrated all uh, their applications and as soon as we migrated all their applications they got they get access to uh, you know high level services uh be it our analytics services our machine learning services um our um uh, our uh, our, our uh, artificial intelligence services that have been critical for them uh, for their growth and and that really is helping them you know get towards their next level of modern applications right uh, now obviously uh, going forward uh, they will have uh, they will have the choice to you know really think about which applications they want to you know refactor or which applications they want to uh, go ahead with uh, that is really a choice in front of them and but you know the we have Cloud and AWS really gave them the opportunity to first migrate and then you know move towards modernization with speed. You know, the speed of a startup is always the kind of the Silicon Valley story where you you know people can make massive changes in 18 months, whether it's a pivot or a new product. You see that in startup world. And now on the enterprise, you can see the same thing. I noticed behind you on your whiteboard, you got a slogan that says, "Are you thinking big?" Um, I know Amazon likes to think big, but also you work back from the customers. And, and I think this modern application thing is a big deal because I think the mindset has always been constrained because back before they moved to the cloud, most IT and, and, and on-premise data center shops, it's slow. You got to get the hardware, you got to configure it, you got you to stand it up, make sure all the software is validated on it and loading a database and loading OSs. I mean, yeah, it got easier and with scripting and whatnot. But when you move to the cloud, you have more scale, which means more speed, which means it opens up their capability to think differently and build product. What are you seeing there? Can you share your opinion on that epiphany of, wow, things are going fast. I got more time to actually think about maybe doing a cloud native app or transforming this or that. What's your what's your reaction to that? Can you share your opinion? Well, ultimately we, we want our customers to utilize you know, most of our modern services, you know, applications should be microservices based. Uh, when desired, they should use serverless, um, serverless technology. Um, they should not have monolithic, uh, you know, relational database contracts. They should use uh, custom uh, databases. Uh, they should use containers when needed, right? So ultimately we want our customers to use these modern uh, technologies to make sure that their IT infrastructure, their licensing, their uh, their entire um, uh, IT spend is completely native uh, to cloud technologies. They work with the speed of a startup, but it's important for them to 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 uh, get to the first step, right? So that's why we create this journey for our customers, where you help them migrate, give them time to build the skills. They'll help them modernize, take up partners along with them uh, um, along with us to to make sure that they can address the need for our uh, customers uh, that's that's what our customers need today and that's what we're working backwards from yeah and I think that opens up some big ideas I'll just say that uh, you know we're joking I was joking the other night with someone here in, in Palo Alto around serverless and I said you know soon you're gonna hear words like architectureless and uh, that's a criticism on one hand but you might say hey you know if you don't really need an architecture, you know, storage lists. I mean, at the end of the day, infrastructure as code means developers can do all the IT in the coding cycles and then make the operations cloud-based. I think this is kind of where I see the dots connecting. Final thought here, uh, take us through what you're thinking around how this new world is evolving. I mean, yeah, architecture is kind of a joke, but the point is, you know, you have to some sort of architecture, but you don't have to overthink it. Totally. Now, that's a great thought, by the way. I know it's a joke, but it's a great thought because at the end of the day, you know, what do your customers really want? They want outcomes, right? Why did serverless technology come? It was because there was an outcome that they needed. They didn't want to get stuck with, uh, you know, the 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 real estate of of a, of a server. They wanted to use compute uh, when they needed to, right? Uh, similarly, you, what you're talking about is, you know, outcome based. 
um, you know, uh, desire of our customers. And, and, and that's exactly where the world is going to, right? Uh, cloud really enforces that, right? We are actually, you know, working backwards from a customer's outcome and using our area, the breadth and depth of our services to, to deliver those outcomes, Right. Um, and, and most of our services are in that path. Right. When we use VMware Cloud and AWS, the outcome is A to migrate, then to modernize, but doesn't stop there. Use our native services, you know, get the business outcomes using this. So I think that's uh, that's exactly what we're going through. Ashish, Ashish, you're the director of global sales and go to market for VMware Cloud on AWS. I want to thank you for coming on, but I'll give you the final minute. Give a plug, explain what is the VMware Cloud on AWS? Why is it great? Why should people um, engage with you and, and the team? And what ultimately is this path look like for them going forward? Yeah, at the end of the day, we want our customers to have the best uh, uh, path to the cloud, right? The, the best path to the cloud is making sure that they migrate safely, reliably, and securely, uh, as well as with speed. Right, and then you know use that cloud platform to to utilize AWS's native services uh, to make sure that they modernize their IT infrastructure and applications. Right, we want uh, ultimately that our customers customers customer get the best out of uh, you know utilizing that that whole application experience is enhanced tremendously by using our services and i think that's that's exactly what we're working towards vmware cloud and aws is is helping our customers in that journey uh, towards migrating modernizing whether they want to exit a data center or whether they want to modernize their applications it's an essential first step that we want to help our customers with Ashish Tawan, Director of Global Sales and Go-To-Market with VMware Cloud on AWS. He's with AWS sharing his thoughts on accelerating business transformation on AWS. This is a showcase. We're talking about the future path. We're talking about use cases with success stories from customers. Ashish, thank you for spending time today on this showcase. Thank you, John, I appreciate it. Okay, this is theCUBE special coverage, special presentation of the AWS showcase. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.